We begin with a report that is still making headlines. Niger. The country is under a military coup, but this takeover of the government is not new to the landlocked nation. Ever since independence from France in 1960, the military or the presidential guard has been taking power by force. The disruptions began in 1974 and continued until this year. Here's a look back at Niger's history of coups. These were the glory years for Niger, the country which is boxed in between seven nations. Niger gained independence in 1960 and Hamani Diori became its first president. Things were smooth for the country. Hamani was loved by his people. He represented the country in various fora and even met the Queen in 1971. But 14 years into his rule, Hamani faced his first challenge. In April 1974, Lieutenant Colonel Saini Kunche led a military coup, suspending the country's constitution. Kunche formed a 12-member Supreme Military Council which took control of government affairs. According to some reports, about 20 people were said to have been killed in the ordeal. Diori was imprisoned from 1974 to 1980 and then held under house arrest until 1987. Saini died in 1987 and Ali Sebu took charge after Saini's death and governed till 1992. Mahamane Usmane of the Social Democratic Convention became president in the country's first multi-party presidential elections in 1993. Usmane was ousted in 1996 during a military coup led by Colonel Ibrahim Bare Mainasara. After a brief period of military rule, Mainasara was elected president in elections marred by anomalies. Mainasara was killed in April by dissident soldiers in an ambush at Niame Airport, paving the way for a third coup in the country's tumultuous history. Dauda Malam Wanke, the commander of the presidential guard, took power before announcing that there will be an elected president and a return to civilian rule by 2000. Mamadou Tanja won Niger's presidential election, defeating Mamadou Isufu, a former prime minister. International observers called the election that followed the 1999 coup generally free and fair. A group of military leaders calling themselves the Supreme Council for the Restoration of Democracy, CSDR, led by General Salu Jibo, captured Tanya and his ministers after a gun battle in 2010. The constitution was suspended and all state bodies dissolved. Despite the coups, the country was relatively calm, even playing host to thousands of refugees fleeing neighboring countries of Burkina Faso and Mali. The citizens now worry about their economic future and that of the country. We are particularly concerned about the financial barriers because in our experience, when there's a coup d'état in a country, the financial institutions either refuse to help or they compromise little on the way they help the country financially. So we believe that this could happen to our country. What we want is for the situation to be restored as quickly as possible. That's really our concern. All externally funded projects will come to a halt. Development projects financed by the EU, World Bank, IMF and others will be halted. Budgetary aid given to Niger will be stopped. I don't know how much it could be, but I'm trying to believe that if we take stock of the situation, we the people of Niger and the leaders can take advantage of this situation and leave with our heads held high. Niger is in limbo. It is also a setback for the nations in the continent yearning for democracy. Bureau Report, Weon, World is One.